What is up, guys? Welcome back to The Verse. My name is Trey. I'll be your host for the day, and we're about to jump into a vocabulary lesson. But before we get started, smash that like and subscribe button so you turn on your bell notifications, and we can get you updated on all the latest in the cryptocurrency and DeFi community. All right, guys, let's jump in. So I created a PowerPoint so that I can educate you. Sometimes you might feel like, the when it comes to this cryptocurrency and that is totally okay guys i just jumped into this thing several months ago and i had to dive in head first if i really wanted to try to grasp some of these concepts so i built a beginner series entry level vocabulary for cryptocurrency so that you can share with your family and friends that maybe want to get in but just don't know how you probably heard in the news, blockchains, NFTs. We're going to break all that down for you so that you know what you're getting into and you don't just waste your money or go in and buy what the latest YouTube guys telling you to buy. A lot of those guys are getting paid prom for promoting things that maybe aren't necessarily working. And here we want to give you guys the truth. So today we're going to get you educated and get started in this vocab lesson. So welcome to the verse beginner series. We're going to have several lessons in this series and they're going to continue in difficulty so the very first terms that we're going to give you are going to be basic terms terms that you really need to know just to be able to get started so first off what is a blockchain a blockchain is a system in which a record of transactions made in crypto are maintained across several computers that are linked to a peer-to-peer -peer network there are two main types of blockchains proof of stake and proof of work which we'll get into at a later video Basically, what you need to know is that these blockchains kind of act as large spreadsheets that are just held together by computers. And these computers are connected together in what we will call a peer to peer network. Here's kind of a graphical image of what a blockchain might look like thinking about it in a digital space. OK, it's denoting or relating to computer networks in which each computer can actually act as a server for the others and it allows shared access. This basically means that nobody owns it. It's decentralizing the network because it's on a peer-to-peer -peer network. Now, some peer-to-peer -peer networks aren't decentralized, like for instance, Coinbase, but most of the things that we're referring to in blockchain are peer-to-peer -peer decentralized. So this is huge. This is how this happens. A decentralized means that it's not controlled by or governed by one person or thing. It's controlled by all of the networks. When you jump into these networks, you're going to be hearing terms that you've never heard before. You're going to be hearing people say it's, the, it's a bull market. It's a bear market. It's bullish. It's bearish. And, and you don't really know what that means. To be bullish on something means that you're really wanting to buy into it. And that's because it's characterized by rising share prices. Okay, so what we'll see here in this trend is that this trend goes up and it has a support all the way through on the bottom side. The support means that this trend is never falling back below its original trend. It's showing a bullish trend because it's holding on that support line at the bottom and it's never crashing down below this point further down the line. Which brings us to bearish. Bearish is characterized or associated with falling share prices. So I gotta get my big head out of the way for you to be able to see that a bearish trend, it had some bull trend at first and it held this support line up until this point, but then it started falling very hard in a bearish fashion, okay? It started into a bear cycle. And eventually that cycle went all the way down and crashed below its original value. So if you are a bear in the market, you are selling your assets that you have put in. Um, you, you, have, you have basically at this point already uh, maybe staked your shares and you're selling them now because they have reached this point here in the bull market where the price was so high that you decided you were going to sell what you had and be part of the bear market to be able to obtain profit. So that it brings me into what is a share. When you think of a share, you have to think of it almost like the cryptocurrency world is a world filled with projects 
just as the world that we live in is filled with corporations and those corporations are owned by shareholders, the same goes for these cryptocurrency projects. A share is a part or a portion of a larger amount which is divided among a number of people or to which a number of people contribute. So you can picture this image here almost as like Bitcoin. This big pie is Bitcoin and somebody else just decided they wanted to buy into Bitcoin. So they're exchanging their USD or fiat currency and they're putting it in this pie here. And this pie is made up of shares of Bitcoin. This money will eventually be converted into a share of Bitcoin. Staking. Staking is something that you can do with your shares. Staking is when you lock up your money into an investment for a certain period of time. In return for that investment, you receive a certain percent of interest back on your initial investment. The coins that are locked, everybody wants to know what is happening with my coins. Well, the coins that are locked up are actually being utilized uh, as money or currency to create nodes that verify transactions on the blockchain. As more and more people put in and stake their money to help verify nodes, this is basically increasing the performance of the overall system. So if we're talking on simple terms, if this is Bitcoin, the more and more people buy in to verify transactions, the higher the price is gonna go because more money is staked and less liquidity is in the market. We're gonna get into more of what liquidity is in a second, but I wanna show you a visual representation of what a stake looks like. Okay, so this is a visual representation of what staking looks like. This here is the staked coins, they're on lock, and they're there for a period of time, which will gain a period of interest. For instance, I'm in the HEX project, and I have a stake that's locked up for the next 15 years. That stake, I won't touch, and that money will be in there verifying transactions and helping grow this hex coin as it is going throughout its life. More and more people will stake and verify more and more transactions on the blockchain. And this is gonna basically create uh, the ability for less liquidity to be on the market as you saw in the first image. I'm gonna go back to that here a second. The more people stake their coins, the less coins will be available on the market. So we have an overall supply of coins. And if there's less coins and the coins become scarce, more scarce, the coins that are in liquidity, then that means the coins overall increase in value. So we were talking about liquidity in the last one. And we were basically comparing liquidity with stakes. Liquidity is the money that's not locked up, that's not staked. So for instance, in the HEX project that I have a 15 year stake in, I also have liquid assets as well. This is money that I can move and I can access now, convert it back to US dollars and be able to pull profits from uh, this project as it continues to rise in price. Liquidity is the degree to which a security can be quickly purchased or sold in the market at a price reflecting its current value. How quickly can you get your hands on cash? That's basically what this is. So I can't get my hands on my 15 year stake. I can't touch it, otherwise I'll be penalized, but I can touch my liquid assets. For cryptocurrency, it's the ability of a coin to be easily converted into cash or other coins. So everybody wants to know, how does this cryptocurrency work? It works because through liquidity, we are able to cash out. You are able to come up big in projects and take that money out in what we were calling bearish style and pull profits, guys. So we're starting to kind of create a full circle for you when it comes to these beginning terms. APY is very um, important to know because it applies to liquid liquidity and it applies to stakes. Uh, basically, 
the annual percentage yield is the real rate of return earned on an investment taking into compound interest, uh, in, in effect, the compound interest. So we'll continue with the HEX uh, model. Each year, currently, through this formula that we see here, the interest has been calculated for HEX. It has been a project that has been in circulation for just over two years. And the average APY per year on that project is 38%. Now, if you were to compare that with a bank that's lending today on a similar uh, type of transaction, which the HEX is a certificate of deposit transaction. If you were to try to get a certificate of deposit from the bank today, you're gonna get about 0.02%. Now, what looks better to you, 38% or 0.02%? I've seen even some Dow coins, which we'll explain what Dow coins are in a later video, but some of them have 38,000% APY. So there's a lot more lucrative ways and places to put your money in, but you have to understand how that money is working for you. And APY is a huge part of that. Next in cryptocurrency, uh, if, you've could, if you've been able to master the concepts that we've talked about so far, you may get as far as to a point where you start hearing people talk about stable coins. What is a stable coin? That starts to get confusing because now you're having not only just coins and blockchains that you can invest in, but you can also put your money into a stable coin. And you might wonder why you would want to do that. Well, let's first explain what a stable coin is. A stable coin is any cryptocurrency designed to have a relatively stable price through being pegged to a commodity. So being pegged to a commodity means that this coin is linked to the price of the United States dollar. Um, and that's what the USDC coin is. That's what we see here. These are other examples of stable coins, the DAI and the USD Tether. But for this example, we'll just talk about the USDC coin. The USDC coin is going to be worth $1 for every $1 that you put in. Now, you're asking, what is the function of, the, of this coin? Well, if you're in a bear cycle, in a bearish trend, and you have assets, maybe they're liquid assets that you need uh, that are declining in value because you're in a bear cycle, you're going to want to lock that money up into something that's not going to fluctuate. That's when you would use a stable coin. Earlier in one definition, uh, the term security was mentioned. And this is something that's very important when it comes to cryptocurrency and understanding taxes and understanding when you do and you do not hold a security. Some projects are being designed to dance around securities for tax purposes, which is, in my opinion, brilliant. A security is a fungible, negotiable financial instrument that represents some type of financial value. So, for instance, securities are defined as stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs, derivatives, and hedge funds. Um, another security could be something that's put through a decentralized, I'm sorry, a centralized exchange such as Coinbase. And any money that you put through uh, that system is going to be considered a security and is going to be taxable. So that's something that you need to know when you're in cryptocurrency is if you have securities and uh, how you're able to manage your taxes when it comes to those securities. The last definition mentioned fungible, which is something that it's kind of a popular term because there's NFTs that are out right now, which stands for non-fungible token. I think people are starting to get into NFTs and they don't even understand what the definition is, what an NFT means, what, what it is, what it does, what its application is. So we will begin to talk about what is fungible. Fungible is about goods contracted for without an individual specimen being specified. So basically, it's able to be replaced or replaced by another identical item. It's mutually interchangeable. Fungible is not something that we more so get into. Fungible was just describing that a security can basically be replaced by another security. Now, for a non-fungible token, this is a unique digital identifier that's tied to the blockchain, and it cannot be copied or substituted. It's basically a one-of-a-kind digital asset. And that's why some of these NFTs are going for so much, because inside the contracts for the NFTs, certain things can be written. You can become a member to a club. 
that NFT could have uh, utilization on a blockchain game um, and several other applications, uh, possibly even more thorough and advanced applications when applying the NFT concept to the metaverse. And that is it. We wanted to get you started on something, something pretty easy, not so complex, not so complicated. And we uh, really hope you enjoyed today's video. We're going to be back with more. And I really hope you guys liked this video. If it was too much information or if it just didn't work for you, let us know down below. If you loved it, let us know down below. We like all criticism because it's going to make us better and help us make you better. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Thank you.